Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update, Wednesday, September 29th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. La Palma update, the lava has reached the sea just west of Todoke. And we reported on it in great detail over at Magnetic Reversal News. The big story tonight, snow and ice close to Rocky Mountain National Park roads. Areas above 9,500 feet are getting an early taste of the global warming goodness. Keep calm. It's boom time. Yes. After um, storm systems move through Colorado, two high mountain roads in Rocky Mountain National Park are closed due to ice and snow accumulation. Rocky Mountain National Park said park rangers began to close Trail Ridge Road and Old Far Fall River Road Tuesday night after snow and ice began to accumulate near Rock Cut and Trail Ridge Road. And that's at 12,000 feet. Now the Boise area sees its first snow with rare September accumulation. How much fell? Well... There you go. You're looking at it. Snow falling in our mountains Tuesday morning. Rain and snow are falling across Idaho Tuesday. The snow cams at local ski resorts show snow levels hovering around 6,000 feet. Well, well, what do we have here? Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Ski Tamarack showing uh, measurable snow in a September to remember. A rare cloud pattern is coming. Oh, what is this? A rare cloud pattern is coming to the Seattle area and will soon be soaked. And many people will be stoked. There are leaves falling from trees. And if the meteorological kind, this is a baroclinic leaf, which is also called a comma. There it is. The baroclinic leaf or a region of thermal contrast in the atmosphere where the frontal system is developing. It's likely to take a comma shape by tomorrow and bring a soaking rain Wednesday and Thursday. Well, considering it's already Wednesday, it's probably already raining now, isn't it? This site can't be reached. Oh, yes, it can. Up to seven inches of snow expected on Mount Hood. A view from the web webcam at Timberline Lodge captured around 1.20 p.m. today. Or is that yesterday? Yes, September 28th, after at least three inches of snowfall, courtesy of the Timberline Lodge, Mount Hood, Oregon. Shut up, Al! He is just simmering in his BS. Heavy rainfall for the central and southern plains. We have freeze warnings out for southern Nevada. You can see the blue blocks in those counties, as well as Idaho. Cover those plants if you want to save something. Heavy rainfall is possible across portions of the central and southern plains over the next couple of days. The rain may result in flooding. Hmm, that's interesting. Especially across parts of Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, where a slight risk of excessive rainfall is in effect. Meanwhile, well above normal high temperatures are likely in the upper Mississippi Valley, through the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys in the southeast. Like a beast. And we are now going to get to the GFS model that's showing that, well, winter is coming and nobody's bumming. The newest model showing heavy snow in the upper Midwest here at the Triple Junction Point, North, South Dakota, Montana. At the midpoint of October, almost a mini blizzard there, 16 inches of snow. But because of our connectivity issues, we'll just take you back to the beginning of the forecast here and you can take a look. So here we are now today, and we'll just move it through. In just uh, the next six hours, we're going to be seeing some heavy snow moving into the high country of Rocky Mountain National Park where those roads are closed. We're going to be seeing some sporadic snow above 12,000 feet in Wyoming, some snow in northern Utah, and heavy snow in B.C., which has already been falling. And as we progress through, the eastern Maritimes are going to be picking up on snow, some snow moving into northern New Mexico in the high elevations. And take a look at that. Southern Arizona, snow in September. A September to remember, like we said. And uh, sparse as it may be, the snow, as we get to mid-October, well, the West Coast and even the Sierras are picking up snow in the first week of October. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for you guys. Seismic update, no quakes to note. Big boomer in uh, Japan. Maybe a few lives lost there, but really no... Um, good news stories coming out from that information. The Greek uptick has ended. 
and uh, nothing else I'm looking at on the map is quite significant. <sighs> Thank God. Now, La, pa La Palma, back to La Palma, the site of the Cumbre Vieja eruption on the flank has now moved a little south. Now, typically, this eruption uh, types on this volcano, if it's erupting up here, it's more explosive, and down here, it's more uh, effusive meaning it's just lava fountains or lava flows. And that's where we're at. We're at the lava river. And it, it became so effusive in the last 24 hours that it surpassed the Doke and moved actually south here and made it to the ocean, where now there's huge amounts of lays. And people up here on the cliffs in Tazacort and other areas have excellent footage as they're shooting down into the volcano. And we just did an amazing update on Magnetic Reversal News and shouted out Bushcraft Bear, who lives on the island, who's doing amazing work. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Fuego, Reventador, Nirangongo. Oh, it's been a while since we talked about that. Sangay, La Palma, Nevados de Chilan, Sabacaya, and Suanosima. Now, Reventador puffing to 15,000. Nirangongo in the Congo, returning Lava Lake is happening. So there's an uptick there. That's amazing. Suano's Hema puffing to 10,000. And Nevado de Chilan now has not just one lava dome in the old cinder cone home. So you can see this eruption is much bigger than that eruption. But now there's one, two cones in the middle. So that's developing Fuego puffing and passing to 17,000 feet. Sabin Kaya to 26,000. And La Palma has been puffing to 12,000, as we talked about earlier. On our update at Magnetic Reversal News, I implore you to go watch that. Fuego, massive pyroclastic flows. Yes, happened in the last 48 hours. The explosive eruption cacophony over there um, at Fuego continues and puff up past. These uh, pyroclastic, boom, there it is. Holy macaroni. Let's blow that up. That's like mind-blowing or, or dab-worthy. I don't know how you look at it, but our, the resolution is so poor. Al Gore's a bore. But it is fantastic. And then pyroclastic flows. These are flows coming down at 900, 1700 degrees at 600 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if you were camping there? Well, you better have the rip stop or that good stuff. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Goes X-ray flux. Space weather news update. We have come up into sea flare. We had a moderate sea flare 24 hours ago. And we had a bunch of starts predicting that there would be geomagnetic storm because of all the impending doom. And we didn't say a peep because we were watching the magnetometer and we weren't impressed. But apparently some people are impressed that KP3, and we haven't gone past there. NASA and NOAA predicted uh geomagnetic storm to kp6 back here and here wow that's why we don't rely on those uh people and other people in the community uh that also build prepper communities next to state prisons we don't rely on them either walmart digs into regenerative agriculture wow holy macaroni we never you couldn't predict that could you sign of the times that's where the money is now, this is the part of the podcast where you learn a whole bunch of climatological, amazing information scientifically. It's, in fact, it's better than university. I used to teach at university, and we'll share my credentials at the end of this video because since my La Palma updates, people have been commenting, you're not a scientist. How dare you report on this? Well, that's just because people are stupid. In fact, they actually comment by reading the title and not actually watching the video. And it's quite clear based on what they say. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that climate change warnings from the collapsed ancient cities are abound. And this has been a headline for the last 48, 36 hours. And this one is coming from physics.org, which is totally a shit factory of non-information. Um, now, why did some ancient Chimer Mesoamerican cities collapse between 900 and 1500 CE? Well, it could be because of grand solar minimum. Yeah, and the Homeric minimum, specifically here, 950 
BC. The Homeric minimum, a grand solar minimum that took place between 2800 and 2550 years ago before present, appears to coincide with uh, what they call climate change. Yeah, that, well, that makes sense. And we actually have a paper here which proves this period existed. Not only that, it proves using proxy data that there was also a magnetic geomagnetic excursion at the same same time oh blowing my mind now we'll leave you links to what a geomagnetic excursion is now at the same time i found a paper that coincides with all this information about ezekiel's vision you know ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air i, I think that's how it goes now, this coincides with the sterno Etrusia geomagnetic excursion and the Homeric minimum all at the same time. I wonder if they're related. Hmm. Anybody's guess? Secret cave chamber may be one of the last Neanderthal hideouts, and it was sealed off for 40,000 years by sediment that they dated. Now, a paper coming out earlier when they entered the cave found cave carvings that may be the first known example of Neanderthal rock art. And now we have a pristine sarcophagus where Neanderthal wandered around over 40,000 years ago. Totally pristine. So the information coming out of there is going to be massive and impressive if they release it to the public. Now the invasive and toxic devil weed was found on the big island. Wait a minute. They've been growing the devil weed on the big island forever. Well, this actually isn't cannabis. This is actually a devilish invasive. My bad. Read the article. The two biggest idiots on the planet, Myla Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, can't wait until they can stick a experimental into their six and a half and four and a half year old children. Now, I just want to show you who the two dumbest indoctrinated a-holes on earth are. I don't know if you heard, but YouTube and other channels have completely removed anti-vaxxers. And we're glad because we are totally pro-vax if you're an idiot. Now, many of you have been wondering what my credentials are, and that's a boom. But they're easy to find. If you actually know my name, you could just put David Mariello into the Google box, into the Googler, and that's a boom. And you will find out that I am, a, well, one of the most important playwrights in New York's history, as well as a master's of arts in geology, Milankovitch, cyclicity, paleoclimatology, and cosmic catastrophe. Yes, th those are my titles. And that's my picture, which is not a schmicture. This is me bouldering uh, about five years ago, north of here, a couple hours right before we got to town. Boom! Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where the mainstream media regurgitates printed highlights that they are fed from their masters, we teach you how to think critically and we give you the data. And that's a boom. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Patreon. Share this video and be a hero. We love you.